Hello, and welcome to another episode of Between the Studs. I'm your host, Mark. Today I'm joined by Chris, one of the owners of Atlanta Brickco, and we are here to talk about custom third-party brands, all kinds of items, things that go with Lego. Stuff Lego does not make. Exactly. That's the that's <coughs> the main thing for me and when I'm looking at a custom brand to buy from is, does Lego already make it? If not, then absolutely. But If, if, if Lego already makes it, it's yeah. a knockoff. That's true. It's yeah. counterfeit. It's knockoff. Uh, we're talking about stuff Lego does not make, mm -hmm. which makes it truly custom. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's the... Uh, Lego makes a lot of stuff. More now than ever. But mm -hmm. there's still things that they really don't cover for whatever reason. Sometimes it's you know, it's not in Lego's core values, or they just haven't gotten around to it. Mm -hmm. um, like, things like the X-Men or different custom weapons come to mind all the time. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll get started with some of the stuff we have on the table here. Do you want to go with accessories first, Chris? Or yeah, go ahead. I, I, I can't stop looking <laughs> at those. <laughs> yes, this uh, treasure hoard of weapons here. Let's just sit it here. We, we'll, we'll get some uh, B-roll of us kind of pawing through it here. But I've this is all the stuff me and Steven, mostly me, have collected over the past. You know how much this nine years this costs. If you were to buy it new, yeah, it'd be so a lot of money. At my first Lego convention, uh, I was at was uh, Birmingham, mm -hmm. Brick Fair, Birmingham, and I went to the Brick Warriors table, and I was like, "Oh, only a dollar for an accessory that's yeah. custom. That's awesome. It's so cheap." Yep. So I get a cup, and I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I need one of these, and I need one of these." Mm -hmm. and well, I mean, if I'm building an army, I guess I need more than one of these. Yeah, you need at least four or five, yeah. <clears throat> next thing you know, I've got a cup half full, maybe. Yeah, and, and it's like, a small sipping glass. All yeah. right, let's see where we're at. And they count it up, and it's like $80, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's going on? It here? adds up so fast. It yeah, it does. But see, so I have spent a lot of money over the years, but mm -hmm. a lot of these I bought on sale. Because yeah. I would keep an eye on their websites, and whenever they felt like clearing out inventory, it'd be 50 cents or even less for a piece. Mm -hmm. And then I would order a dozen of them. So I'd be saving a, a substantial amount of money just be by buying carefully. And you don't have just Brick Warriors in here. No, know. there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be mostly Brick Warriors, Brick Forge, and Brick Arms. Several um, brands we'll talk about a little bit more later, too. But, um, yeah, so just a ton of weapons, mostly medieval or fantasy style. But there's some kind of modern ones. There's a Brick Arms, like a laser rifle. So lots of accessories. I use these fairly often, but not all the time. Depends on the creation. So. so this has always been my most favorite uh, Lego third-party accessory. Yeah. It's the like medieval Roman-style helmet, maybe, mm -hmm. with the, <laughs> I don't know, the plume is made out of like swords. Exactly, out, sword blade. Going down the middle of it, almost like a mohawk, and it's just... Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. You want a hero figure? This is the mm -hmm. kind of accessories you want. Like, uh, yeah, that's a Brick Warriors helmet there. And then you got a bunch of Brick Forge. These, like, Roman-style helmets that LEGO doesn't really make. Yeah. Um, here's another Brick Forge with the chrome on it, because they were doing that for a short period of time. So there's some really fun accessories that you can get from these couple different brands. All of these are going to be linked in the description, by the way, if you're interested in checking them out. I also like that they have different styles, so you can look at it and say, yeah, that's Brick Warriors. Yeah. Or you could look at it and say, yeah, that's Brick Forge. But I know Brick Forge always has really caught my eye with their uh, dual molded stuff. Mm -hmm. um, where, uh, you know, you have two multiple colors. Yeah. Whereas Brick Warriors is usually all one color, and if you want it a different color, then you paint it. Yeah, exactly. They're yeah. really kind of leaning into painting, even though I don't see a lot of people doing it. It's, yeah. it's something that they're trying to encourage. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. They they do. Uh, they come from a background, I think, of miniatures and wargaming, mm -hmm. D and D, Warhammer, stuff like that. Exactly. Where you paint your own stuff. And you could do that with Brick Forge too, but I think it's less implied with Brick Forge. In Lego, that's just not a thing, really. Not as much, it no. Really is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, typically, when you go to paint Lego, a lot of people will, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. Lean back and surprise, like, what are you doing? That's heathenistic, you know, it's like, it's mm -hmm. not purist, but um, this isn't going to be a purist video. This is about all the accessories and stuff, so. But it's worth mentioning that um, the original founders of both Brick Forge and Brick Warriors have since moved on and have sold the company to some new owners. We know both of the new owners mm -hmm. of Brick Forge and Brick Warriors, both very great crew through. One, one of them actually owns Eclipse Graphics, too. We'll talk about that in a second. But, uh, so, these are, you know, revitalized companies. 
so it's yes. very cool. So. Yeah, and uh, we don't actually carry either one of them in the store yeah. on a regular basis. You can find them where we get them traded in all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the reasons we don't carry them in the store is because it's so hard to display and carry each and every individual piece. Yeah. So usually we'll just sell a, a company's product that has retail packs. Yeah, and we've done that in the past a mm -hmm. little bit, but it just hasn't been very feasible with the way it's presented. I think the best way to get brick warriors is either on the website or at the show. So you can yeah. see the booth and you can get pick out the pieces. It's great. That's at the a Lego best way convention, to do it. yeah. it's one of the highlights of a convention for me is to to be able to get custom weapons there. Absolutely, you can see it and touch it and feel it, and it, it looks so much better in person than it does on the website. Yeah, it's fantastic to get that tactile mm -hmm. shopping experience. But um, we actually do sell a couple accessory packs. You want to break those out next? Yeah. Bit? So uh, of course, one of the original accessories companies is Brick Arms. They yes. were one of the first ones mm -hmm. and they're one of the more successful ones and they're still uh, originally uh, owned by the original owner. Made in the USA they, too. Are they really made I in the USA? I believe so. I think oh, he has okay. the molding machines at his That's place. Great. So yeah. That's great. Um, I know a lot of these companies have struggled with uh, foreign countries knocking off their products mm -hmm. because they're just uh, small companies, brick arms, brick lawyers, like us, you know, yeah. we're just locally owned and operated. Can't really afford a whole and team of we, lawyers. We yeah. can't afford lawyers like Lego, so if uh, somebody, another country, knock off our product, we can't say, stop. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Can't afford to send yeah. somebody after them, so. And what I like about these brick arms retail packs is they sell really well because they are packaged up, you get a group. This one's the World War II weapons pack, version three. Mm -hmm. um, and you get the rifles that are all like accurate. And exactly, the historically helmets, accurate. Yeah. yeah, the pistols, there's a German Luger pistol. Um, and then on the back, it names them and tells you specifically what you're getting, like the model number, the, the pistol, this here, this pistol's the TT-33. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the uh, Takarov. Yeah. Uh, Russian, I think. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And what's interesting about uh, this pack here, it's doing something that Lego will probably never do. <coughs> it's World War II. And there's so many Lego builders out there that really want to build historical scenes from World War II, like tanks and trenches and battle scenes, and it's really cool. But, you know, Lego's never going to make official accessories for them. The closest thing we've gotten to is Indiana Jones and that plane, and that's kind of like skirting the line a little bit, but... Uh, <sighs> You know, they're never going to come out with the, uh, the the various weapons and stuff from that era because that was very impactful to the Christ Christensen family back in, you know, because they actually kind of lived through that. Okay, so that and makes so sense. They're like, never do tanks, never do war. It's even like, though how far back do you want to go, though? Because yeah. they do have medieval knights mm -hmm. and warriors and weapons. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They make all sorts. I, I think most of Lego's <coughs> themes are battle-related. They're just more fanciful. They're a little less yeah. close to home, which... Of uh, War Two is it's, it's a little it's a ways away now. I, I forget how many years it, ago. That's what we want. We want battle stuff. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what. Uh, honestly, a, a huge portion of the Lego market is people buying figures to line up in, on uh, base plates in their you know garage yeah. or whatever. So it's yeah. And so I I played with my son with our minifigures mm -hmm. and we would spend hours setting them up. Yeah. Hours and then it's uh, of course I was always the bad guys or the not as cool guys. Mm -hmm. And he was always the good guys. The heroes, right? And, yeah. you know, my mind goes right to the clones. So he yeah. he always had all the clones and the Jedi. Mm -hmm. And then I had the droids. Yeah. Were the bad guys. And, uh, he, you know, his one hero, whoever he liked most at the time, maybe mm -hmm. Obi-Wan Kenobi or Mace Windu or Anakin, mm -hmm. they would come along and knock down this one figure in less than five minutes would knock mm -hmm. down my entire army. And he would just be going, hi ha and, and I'm like, I just spent the last two hours setting this up. Vogan, that's not the way this works. You, this guy shoots this guy. This guy shoots turns, this guy. Yeah. Of course, the clones don't hate anything. <laughs> and uh, he's, you know, and it's like. <laughs> yeah. He, he just destroyed everything. But that's, that's the, the beauty of Lego minifigures. Oh, you yeah. have a huge battle scene if you collect a few. So it's yeah. great. The uh, so your typical custom accessory goes for like a dollar. Yeah. Right. Uh, these are the over molded stuff, mm -hmm. and this one is made by Brick Arms, and it's where you got two colors in one mold. Yep. This is a specific blaster cannon from 
uh, Star Wars. Yeah, it might be from the First Order. I'm not sure, but it's yeah. it's a pretty cool looking blaster. And so. it's ten ninety nine for this one little gun. And brick arms are worth it, and the really specially custom ones are very detailed. So it's you can understand why it's that value, but it's still surprising to see them like that. And then here we've got uh, another one with this is modern warfare. Uh, you've got another overmolded thing. It's the Marshall's rifle and pistol, mm -hmm. um, and that goes for fifteen ninety nine. Yeah. So those are pretty. They're high quality and they're yeah. expensive to make, which is why they're so expensive. Yeah, it's got multiple molds of plastic <coughs> interwoven together, so that's where that value starts to come from. So. These are pretty neat here, too. That's the uh, Brick Arms D93 Incinerator. Mm -hmm. So it's like a lot of custom molded stuff that, that you then put them together. Yeah, it's a flamethrower. It's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, there it is in the back. Yeah. And since Lego already makes flames, he includes a real Lego flame in there. Exactly. Which is cool. It's perfect. Very and that cool. plastic, the Brick Arms plastic, is fantastic. And yeah, they have, I think, the highest quality plastic. It's, it's like Lego, if not, you know, maybe even superior in some instances uh, it's pretty awesome this is really unique here for brick arms because it's a uh, jointed droid arm parts mm -hmm. and what brick arms usually is is brick arms it's uh, well, the weapons usually the weapons yeah not actual arms yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> but uh these this is a new product from them i don't think people know about these but it's you know these your typical droid arm is just straight or it's just bent a little bit but they're pretty fixed. rigid yeah Whereas you put these together and you've got a really neat droid arm that can actually move. So he's got now a bending oh, yeah, arm. Oh, that is awesome. He can be like, high five, or he can be mm -hmm. reached down. He can be straight like a normal leg one, but he can also do have his arm with an L. He can't do high five. They only have oh, yeah. Two claw. <laughs> high two, because he's got two claws. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's, that's super cool. That elevates this droid to being one of the coolest figures on the battlefield now, so that's awesome. And they're relatively cheap. You get a whole pack of them for yeah, 10 bucks. Yeah, that $10 price point again. Yeah. So. so then we get to the next one, and this might be our newest best-selling accessory mm -hmm. company, is the Big Kid Bricks, who they're more known for making custom figures. Yeah. But these accessories are just as good as brick arms. They're um, really nice. I know these are made in the USA. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he does really custom stuff that other people aren't doing, yeah. which is what makes him popular. Uh, this is Harry Potter specific wizarding ones. Mm -hmm. So he's got them all numbered on the back, but he's got like Drake, Draco Malfoy's wand, Harry Potter's wand, Luna Lovegood's wand, whereas Lego just makes them all the same. It's exactly the same mold for every single one. So, But these ones are specific to that character, and they're just really really special yeah and then uh, like these are some like I think they're essentially like Star Wars you got uh, Darth Maul hilt you've got a uh, force pike some really cool custom lightsaber and large weapons for mm -hmm. Star Wars so it's very specific to each figure we got a little bit of a um, with the Knights of Ren they had some kind of cool brick built weapons but they're mm -hmm. a little big and bulky these are a lot more detailed a lot more condensed so yeah it's very nice so. um, and then Big Kid Bricks also makes clothing packs, mm -hmm. <coughs> which you don't see very often. It's kind of hard to make custom clothing. Um, yeah, fabric pieces. Yeah. yeah, this one here is it's called Space Hero Brown, mm -hmm. uh, which is of course a Jedi, and you've got a special over-the-shoulder cape. It's been redesigned so that it goes over their shoulders. You've got the comma, which is. Uh, uh, the hood, I think, mm -hmm. and then or maybe the waist cape, and then the waist tie, which is like the belt, so that it looks like a belt hanging over it, and, yeah. it, and it all looks makes your minifigures look brand new, exactly, like a totally custom figure. And these, that's only ten dollars too, so yeah. those aren't too bad. And so you can really get those custom droids and Jedi looking really phenomenal very quickly with just a few of these packs. So we're yeah. excited to be able to sell not only the brick armors but also the big kid bricks packs here too. So. Yeah, and that kind of covers, I think, all of our... Most of the accessories we have to talk about accessories today. accessories that we have. Yeah. There are a lot of companies that, that do make accessories. We just can't carry them all. Yeah. One that we don't have, what we see at conventions a lot, is K-Town Bricks. I want to mention them for mm -hmm. sure. Because they have um, a wide variety of accessories, not only printed items, but accessories too. They have swords and axes and stuff. Very medieval, very much 
our theme. So, so that's what you see. You see a lot of these uh, small manufacturers doing niche markets, mm-hmm. and Cape Town Bricks does the medieval. Oh yeah, uh, stuff, and which you and I are both huge fans of. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, I want to resell his stuff, but he's not doing resellers. Yeah, he just does it himself. Yet. Yeah, and I get it because you know he's he's re- on relatively new, mm-hmm. um, but hopefully he does soon. Yeah, maybe he gets to the point where he's grown enough he can produce enough product to get to us to sell. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So. yeah. Until then, we're just waiting patiently. But uh, but speaking of big kid bricks, do we want to talk about figures next? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they're our biggest uh, custom minifigure uh, dealer, mm-hmm. and some things that we really like about the big kid bricks is his attention to detail. Yeah. Um, he doesn't just. You know, a lot of the the manufacturers of custom minifigures uh, will just print on the front. They mm-hmm. won't do the they ha- they can't do the capes and the clothing, um, and then they can't mold the special parts. Whereas yeah. he does it all himself. Uh, so this is uh, the gecko. He was in the Mandalorian, mm-hmm. uh, just kind of like a side character. Yep. He's also been to our store a few times. Dominic yep. Pace, the actor. That was pretty fun. I think um, we have videos on that we can yeah. link back to. So. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and look at the detail here on this figure. He's got a, a custom molded head and rebreather. Mm-hmm. A custom molded wet gun. Yeah. It was his gun. A uh, strap, a rubber sling, strap there, yeah. A rubber sling on the gun. Um, what do you call those? those gauntlets. Are, yeah, van braces, gauntlets on yeah. his mm-hmm. on his wrists. A specially made trench coat, mm-hmm. th- just for him, and then uh, three sixty printing around the entire minifigure, yeah. even under the trench coat. Uh, it that is a lot of detail put into that and i i don't i can't remember off the top of my head the retail price on that but it yeah. should be about 30 or 40 dollars because mm-hmm. there's so much time and effort that headpiece i believe mm-hmm. is hand painted by big yeah. bricks so that's really cool so yeah and so you know he has a you know a professional printer that actually prints on the lego just like lego but mm-hmm. uh he can't do that on the custom molded heads yeah. so they have to hand paint those and what I like about the custom minifigures is that Lego doesn't make them mm-hmm. this is the blue snaggletooth which is like a really rare action figure from the 1970s Yeah, and he's worth a few hundred dollars mm-hmm. very iconic to Star Wars why has Lego never made him it just blows my mind. Exactly. So I mean, you can understand a more, you know, specific side character. Like, yeah. it doesn't really have the time to make it, but something that's more iconic or uh, more interesting or very part of, cu- you know, pop culture, it still surprises me Lego doesn't make more figures. And that's why they're doing it. And we love them for that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And then uh, yeah, I'm friends with the, the maker of Big Kid Bricks, Will, and I've always asked him to do G.I. Joe because that's one of my favorite things. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, he's making G.I. Joe figures, and this is my favorite, Firefly. There you go. Uh, he's kind of like, he's he's considered Cobra, but he's more like on that, he's a mercenary. Yeah, he's more gray area, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, he does have the Cobra logo on him, though. Mm-hmm. But he was always one of my favorite figures. That's super cool. And he does a whole line of G.I. Joe figures. Mm-hmm. But uh, there are a lot of custom minifigure makers now. Yes. Including K-Town Bricks, who's doing the Knights. Yes. He, he he focuses pretty much exclusively on medieval stuff. A little bit of sci-fi. He made two Dune figures, which I purchased, and they were very cool. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's, he has a lot of custom printed Knights, shields, torsos, and very high-quality stuff, too. E- Eclipse Graphics has always done a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clone Army Customs, of course, yep. has the niche market on clones. Yes. Um and they do, they, we forgot to mention them with accessories. They too. do sell accessories. You see yeah. them at shows, not, maybe not quite as often as uh, some of the other vendors. Oh, but here still. we go. I've got a Clone Army Customs pack here. Perfect. And uh, they are right in line in pricing with the other mm-hmm. companies. Uh, but what I like about Clone Army Customs is quality is amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, Clone Army Customs the Star battle Wars rifle, Blaster yeah. mm-hmm. in Chrome. And they're... It's hard to chrome stuff, and that it is. is really good. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the Clone Army Customs helmet. Mm-hmm. And they have their own logo printed on the inside of the helmets, which I like a lot because you know it's theirs. Yeah. And it's good quality. Um, they also have a custom cut 
cloth in there for mm -hmm. a pauldron. Yeah, some of the clones have little waist capes or uh, you know, shoulder pauldrons, and so they really go attention to detail for clones, because it's very specific, I've learned over the years, is that clones are <laughs> all different colors and mm -hmm. insignia, yeah. So. <coughs> Other mm -hmm. uh, custom minifigure makers, let's see, we get a lot of the Brick Mania figures yep. in on trade. Those are crazy high quality too. So. Yeah, here's uh, one of the Brick Mania ones, and we don't resell those uh, mainly because we uh, resell the Battle Brick customs, and there's no sense in selling two of the same brand uh, genre yeah so. genres mm -hmm. yeah, yeah for custom minifigures and the brick mania are such high quality and they put so much work into them that they are very expensive mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, this is a brick mania minifigure it's a uh, custom battle of Mogadishu delta force operator mm -hmm. and he's got the designer listed on there and yeah. it is perfect yeah i mean it, that is 360 printing, absolutely awesome. You can't make it more detailed than that, but yeah, they, they're, these are probably the most premium priced of figures on average, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you are getting what you pay for, though, so if you want the best yeah. military figures, these are really good. So, uh, Very similar package. Actually, mm -hmm. probably, we all get our packaging from, like, the same people. Yeah. But uh, this one is Eclipse Graphics, mm -hmm. which we resell a yep. lot of their products. Um, and this one here is digital camo, and again, it's 360 printing all mm -hmm. over it. Looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. And these go for uh, 25.99. Yeah. So that's uh, also a very good deal for that really high detail. It actually is printing. for that yeah. much detail. Mm -hmm. But what we carry is the uh, Battle Brick Customs. Yes. And that's, that's what we largely <coughs> have in our inventory is those Battle Brick figures because they are very high quality but also still very affordable. I think they're probably the most affordable <coughs> option you can get for custom military figures. They're also located right here locally mm -hmm. in Atlanta and that makes it easy for us to, to source the products. Exactly. Um, here's one of our better selling um, Battle Brick Customs minifigures. Yes. It's the Juggernaut mm -hmm. and he does mostly modern military and World War II World yeah, some World War II, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But uh, these are just awesome figures. They've got custom, they're real Lego parts mm -hmm. for what Lego makes. And then like stuff that Lego doesn't make, like the armor, the helmet. Yeah, the guns. Yeah. Are uh, custom made. Yeah. So. And very cool looking, very, we sell these all the time. And we're oh, always yeah. restocking oh, them yeah. to try and keep up. So they're yeah. great. So. Very good stuff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, and then as far as the military kits that we sell, we sell the Battle Brick Customs. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's just because the Brick Mania ones are so, such high quality. Yeah. That I they're amazing, but they're like the four would, times the price of a normal Lego set. So they're yeah. very, very expensive. And mm -hmm. we do get people coming in asking for them. Um, yeah. But then again, I don't know if they would buy them even if we had them. Uh, we do get them in on trade. Yeah. And this is one we got from our Portland Hall. Mm -hmm. And it's a... Uh, Looks like a Russian tank. Yeah, that would be my guess. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, so it looks like a Russian battle tank, which is pretty yeah. cool. So. Comes with a really cool 360 printed minifigure, um, and then it also says that it comes with their special track. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember this, but uh, Brick Mania did a Kickstarter campaign so that they could make custom track for Lego kits that was more realistic than the current Lego one. Yeah. And it was successful. Mm hmm I think that they were having trouble with the different widths of the um, the track that Lego makes. Mm -hmm. So they had to make kind of a medium-sized one that works better for minifigure scale tanks. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, Brick Mania is out of Minneapolis, and this kit here is $289, mm -hmm. which it's worth every penny. It's yeah. That it's such high quality. Yeah, uh, shrink wrapped in a nice box. Even the packaging is yeah. just really, really cool. Um, and a lot of times you'll see signatures. Actually, yeah, that's got um, numbers on it mm -hmm. on the probably the number of how many they made. Yeah, and that's handwritten in sharpie. And sometimes you'll see signatures on them. Exactly, super cool. Um, by and another note is that this is uh, Brick Mania is owned by Daniel Siskind, who mm -hmm. also was one of the first like 
Lego factory yes. design winners, and he did the medieval blacksmith shop. Yeah, back in like 2003 or four or two. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, a decade, uh, two it's decades a ago. very expensive yeah. set. Mm -hmm. Of course, all old castle sets are. Yes. <clears throat> and then we compare that to our Battle Brick Customs, which we carry, and uh, these are extremely good quality as well. Uh, cool packaging. This is an M1 Abrams tank. Uh, it's 239 pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's tw more than tw twice the size, 622 pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one's only $89. Yeah. And so you a can third the price. <laughs> yeah. You can still play with it. Mm -hmm. You can still do all that stuff with it. But it's a third of the price. And yeah. that's really what it comes down to with consumers making purchases. Uh, we see when we sell um, custom minifigures is twenty dollars is the threshold. Yeah. Anything more than twenty dollars, it's not going to sell right away. Yeah, it's going to hang out for a little bit. So. Yeah, and you get the same thing with Lego kits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most people, if if it's under a hundred dollars, it'll sell pretty reasonably. If it's a custom Lego kit, mm -hmm. as, long, as long as it's pretty good size. But if it's over that, if it's like two, three hundred dollars, you got to have a very specialized collector buying that set. So they have such a hard time sourcing the parts for these kits. Yeah, everybody does mm -hmm. uh, because there's only an infinite number of parts out there available yeah. on Bricklink. And then you never know, some random person might, I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of sellers on Bricklink. Some yeah. random person might all of a sudden post a thousand of this part that you need, and it's like, ooh, 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 I got to get it. Yeah, everybody but jumps to get it. Other yeah. people need it, too. Mm -hmm. And now Lego's selling even more and more parts. Yeah. But they're expensive. Exactly. And, uh, you know, so you typically see a custom kit go for about 30 cents per piece. Yeah. Speaking of custom kits, mm -hmm. these are some really one, neat ones we got in the Portland Hall. Yes. And that's actually how we get a lot of these more very unique custom kits, yeah. isn't it? Where they're traded into a still sealed, ready to go, so. Uh, we got two of these. Th mm -hmm. They're both from England. Yes. And this is... Bright Bricks, looks like the brand. But yeah. Chester Cathedral in Lego. It's 1,584 pieces, which is a lot mm -hmm. for a custom Lego kit. And it's a micro-scale building and cathedral and it's the packaging is not bad it is interesting in that it says it does have the lego logo on it and it says certified professional mm -hmm. so uh, the d designer duncan titmarsh i'm assuming is um a lego certified professional that must be the case to get that logo yeah. on there otherwise they'd be in hot water for sure so <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, that kit, we're selling it for $400, which I guess is around that price range mm -hmm. uh, because it is a very unique uh, thing. Yeah. Um, we're never going to see this again, basically. This came so out yeah. in 2014. Mm -hmm. So um, there's that one. And then this, this is actually the same company, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's Exeter Cathedral in England. Yeah. That one's got a lot more tan involved in that uh, set here. So. And this actually says number 174 out of 500 made. And uh, this one's from the same time, 2014. Mm -hmm. so. And that uh, one's also $400 and has just a few less pieces, but it's also. Yeah, cool. at this point, you know, and at this price level, piece count is almost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and we've learned by putting our own custom kits together that we don't want anything more than like. 30 or the 40 dollars. your fist. Yeah. Because it is so hard to get the parts for it. Yeah. And that's why a lot of times you'll see Brickmania and other custom companies saying limited run of 500. Because that's all they can get the parts because for. Because that's all the parts <laughs> for that exist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then you even though one might be available today, mm -hmm. Lego might discontinue that part in that color yeah. next week. Exactly. Right now, so. They, uh, they, it might not even be in all the colors that they need to make it in, so mm -hmm. they need to make it camo or something to make it possible, so it's interesting. So. This was also part of that Portland Hall. It's a um, modular arcade corner unit, mm -hmm. and it is uh, very simple, simple packaging. 
by Christopher McVeigh. Mm -hmm. And I think it's simple packaging because he was selling them online. Yes. So it, he doesn't really need uh, He's got great pack. pictures. We might actually yeah. be able to find some pictures of this build. So. Uh, but you know a little bit more about him than I do. Yeah, so really talented designer. He ended up doing a series. Was that Brick Sketches? Yeah, I think he did that. And uh, so he, he made these really cool, like, s retro technology made in Lego, um, you know, art pieces made in Lego, very artistic, very popular. Uh, his stuff was on, I, th I believe, Instagram and Facebook and Flickr for a long time. And he, so he was doing pretty well with these kits, and Lego hired him. I'm not sure if he even applied. Uh, they might have reached out to him. I don't know the full story, but they, they got him on board, and he was making kits very similar to the ones he was doing on his own for yeah. Lego shortly after. So it's pretty interesting. In his instructions, his website's still out there, mm -hmm. and you can see the instructions for him because they don't come with instructions. Yeah. You have to go online and get them. But um, I don't think he's selling them anymore, though. We'll have to double check on that. He's not selling them anymore. Yeah, I think yeah. that's part of the, the thing is like you work for Lego now, you're not selling custom. He's done kits. some yeah. big sets. Mm -hmm. Didn't he do Atari? Um, he did like I think it was a full like old. Um, computer screen, mm -hmm. stuff like that, like old TVs, radios. Do you know what he's done for Lego? He's done some um, pretty big. He's, I believe he's, he, special if he wasn't involved with the Atari, I'd be surprised, yeah. or the uh, Nintendo, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you get down to our own kits, and this is about our size that we like. Yeah, we like that $20 <laughs> price point. It's about, yeah. most people can afford that. It's a fun little build. Um, we can get the pieces for it not too difficult mm -hmm. if it's pretty small, So, it's, but these are a lot of fun. So. This is a uh, Demogorgon kit that we do. We've probably got about a 20, maybe about two dozen custom kits that we do, all about this size. Yeah. And uh, these have sold out many times in the past. We usually do 100, 200 at a time. Mm -hmm. Small um, batches. So. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's hard to keep them in stock because they are pretty popular. Yeah, if they're in stock and you are thinking about getting one, it's a good idea to just go ahead and grab one because it takes us a, a month or two to get the pieces together, organized, yeah. and put back together for another batch. So. On our website, we call them exclusive kits. Mm -hmm. And we've got Daleks on there. We've got, because our Daleks better than Lego's Daleks. Yeah, Lego's Dalek was a little small yeah. and now very expensive. And it's older, too. We started making Daleks before Lego was Yes, exactly. Um, and then we, what, else, what other custom kits? We've do got we Mothman. We've got the Shroomkin, which is actually one of our biggest yeah. and most popular kits. Yeah. Um, that one is pretty cool. We've got uh, gnomes, we've got power rings. The gnomes are cool, the power um, rings are cool. we got more that we're definitely working on. We have yeah. smaller dragons and things that we're hoping to come out with soon. Mothman actually came out last week. Right? Yeah, Where, was very it recently. This week? Yeah, it was, uh, uh, I think it was late last week Friday, or early yeah. this week. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's already selling pretty well. Uh, another company that has figured out the small size Mm -hmm. building kits just like us uh, and they're a friend of ours and we resell them as B3 Build Better Bricks. Yes. Uh, formerly known as the Brick Show. Yeah. Uh, and they specialize in arcades. Mm -hmm. and, and, and cool stickers and designs for those arcades. These arcade games, of course, they don't have any licensing rights so they have to make it sound like it but this one is Spy Bricker mm -hmm. which is, you know, everybody knows is Spy Hunter. Exactly. Uh, and and the kids don't come with the minifigures, but the arcades have these really cool custom sticker packs. Mm -hmm. So this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least about seven custom stickers that yeah. you put on it. And they look fantastic. And this one here is Dance Pants Revolution. <laughs> Exactly. This was after my time, this actual arcade game. I never yeah. got into that. That was more around my time, I believe, although I never got on that because I'm not a dancer. But um, yeah. Spy Hunter would have been my jam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so they've made like dozens of these designs, mm -hmm. and you can fill out a Lego arcade room very quickly. And it, they're affordable, just like our building kits. This one is $20, but some of them are down to like $15. Yeah. So. Nice affordable price point. You can get like two or three of these and have a fun time in your Lego City. So and that's rain, by the way. If anybody can hear the background stomping, yeah, maybe a little bit. It just sound, it'll sound like a white noise. So. As far as building kits go, I think that kind of covers all of them. We do have. I did bring the train pack in. Yes. So, so this is a train crossing, and Lego doesn't really make these train. Crosses. No, not the and not the X ones anymore. And so. You need you know you need a very large setup in order to use these. Mm -hmm. However, if you wanted one, you wouldn't be able to get one. So 
we have one of our customers figured out a way to make it out of pieces. Yeah. So he made that for us, and then I think you made the instructions for mm -hmm. it. And uh, we, we sell the kits for these. Lego did make a train crossing piece, but it's like $50 or yeah, something. Yeah, the old, older, yeah. older model that isn't used anymore. So. And then uh, there are companies that make custom railroad track pieces. Yes. Uh, I know one of the big ones is out of uh, England. Mm -hmm. And they make like train track that instead of having the same old curve, it has different curves. Yeah, more like that. gentle. Yeah, longer curve, straight yeah. pieces, different curves. And then this is uh, something we got in on trade. It's Emmy Models Metal Rails. That's interesting. Yeah, it is really interesting. And it, it connects with regular train track, but it, I'm assuming it works with the 9-volt track. Mm -hmm. It might. I, we'd have to test that out, but that's a very interesting... And there's a lot of work that had to have gone into that because uh, that's, that's metal made to work with Lego. Exactly. you got the metal tracks on there. So. Mm -hmm. And you can assemble the whole thing, too. So. Yeah. Very cool. It even has Lego pieces in there where they can, so that's pretty pretty fun. So. We skipped uh, a bunch of minifigures. I'm seeing a lot of minifigures sitting over here. Can we, we can circle back? Yeah, what other minifigures do we want to talk about here? So I think one of the reasons we skipped these is because we don't, number one, we don't sell them in the store mm -hmm. unless we get them in on trade. And so some of them, I don't even know who made them. Yeah. <laughs> To me, this looks like Eclipse Graphics. Yeah, it might be that, or possibly Citizen, Citizen Brick. Citizen Brick, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so Citizen Brick, I don't think he accepts resellers. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't need to. He sells his stuff online at, himself. At conventions and online. Yeah, uh, so. He's somebody that I buy from when I go to a convention still. Mm -hmm. um, he made the Weird Al Yankovic uh, custom minifigure. And my, yep. We were at this uh, at Brickworld Chicago and the very next month we were going to see Weird Al. Mm -hmm. So I got my daughter the custom minifigure. That's fun. Person. Very timely. Yeah. yeah. So that's great. Um, and he does a really good job with not only with the printing but also the packaging. Yeah. And the, he makes some very unique uh, often zombie themed or very unusual mm -hmm. stuff. So you can check out his website. He's got a lot of uh, a very cool prints and uh, pieces for sale. So. What's neat about that, this zombie is he's got a broken bottle, mm -hmm. like a broken beer bottle or wine bottle. And yeah, it's I, I know. custom made by somebody. I think Brick Forge makes some of those mm -hmm. broken bottles because I think I have a few of them in this bucket over here. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's very well done. Great and figure. And then uh, this figure here is interesting. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Republic Bricks. Yes. And he just started printing recently, but this is a, I guess it's a red Darth Vader, kind of like the promo Vader, mm -hmm. that is pretty famous. But this one has been made red because it's a Valentine's Day edition. Yeah. So his uh, control panel on his chest has a heart on it, mm -hmm. which is really neat. And he did this in a limited number. And it has collector's value. He's yeah. sold out on his website. Mm -hmm. So it is very well done. His arms are printed and everything. Yeah, that has some uh, cool designs going on for sure. So. This one here is one we got in trade, and it is fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, you can't make licensed products without permission, and it's hard to get permission for licensed products. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I am sure he didn't get any permission for this. I don't know who made it. But it's a custom Los Angeles Rams clone trooper. Mm -hmm. And it's one of 100 made. And there's a kind of like a little certificate of authenticity in here. It says 18 out of 100. And the company who made it is JT. I have no idea who that is, but it's yeah. a very nice custom. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. very cool. I'm guessing they're out of California because it's Los Angeles Rams, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that might have been made in conjunction with the Rams getting the Super Bowl that one year. Maybe. So. That's a, a very strong niche. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's Star Wars and it's the Rams. Mm -hmm. So if you're a Star Wars fan and a Rams fan, I, I guess you're going to want that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's very specific. <laughs> um, and then a couple more minifigures. This one here looks like, we got this in on trade. I'm guessing that's Brickmania. It's a famous astronaut with the cowboy hat. Is that ah, Neil is, Armstrong? It might be. This is a, a space 
Rick Rodeo 2021. So I was actually oh, there that really? year. Oh, really? And that would have been, um, I'm not sure who made this, but it was made in conjunction with a convention. So Very cool. Yeah, you get the All little right. Rick Rodeo logo, their little uh, Texas flag on a brick. So. Yeah, so a lot of conventions, Brick World, Brick Fair, the bigger ones, do mm -hmm. custom minifigures. And this is probably the coolest one I've ever seen. Yeah. It's That's a great, really great minifigure, and uh, it's cool that it's uh, like for a specific event at a specific time. So, so who knows who made that one? Yeah, it's, 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 it's I don't know the brand, one which caught my eye. Mm -hmm. We get them in on trade all the time, and I just I, I actually like getting the customs in on trade as long as they're good. Yeah, they're not always good. Yeah, there's a difference between a cool custom clone trooper of a of a division that Lego doesn't make versus mm -hmm. getting another Five Hundred First fake minifigure that isn't very yeah. good. So that Actually, the fake minifigures we give away or yeah. throw away. Yeah. So we, tr we don't keep those or sell those. So, yeah. This is a uh, resin mold of mm -hmm. Galactus. That's awesome. And this is... We sell these on our website. It's $150. And I can't remember who makes them, but they're really neat. Yeah. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just a really cool thing. So we, we, we have about 10 of those. I, wow. I know there was a limited run made. Yeah, that's got some weight to it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's almost like metal or something. Yeah, and that's got a really cool print on the front and in mm -hmm. the eyes and face. So that's just really cool. If you're a uh, fan of the old Marvel comics, this is for you for sure. That's awesome. And that's definitely a unique way to make a big minifigure. Mm -hmm. right <laughs> That is so cool. I wish Lego would do stuff like that for giant figures. That'd be so cool. Yeah, they you know they do make buildable ones, which is the whole point, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, not to get too far off topic, but they just I saw some pictures of the new animals coming out, mm -hmm. and they've got that big whale. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's all more or less one piece. Yeah, and it's, it's like mm. you know mm. I, the whole point of Lego is to build it. You know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's they're good. Play with it too, so I can see that. It, it really looks like Playmobil to me. The, it's starting to lean like that. Like, yeah. and the new elephant mold is also like one big piece with a head, you know, that uh, attaches to the front. So it's like it's getting a little simplistic with their animal molds, mm -hmm. but interesting. So. But yeah, so we talked about minifigures. We talked about custom kits. We want to talk about some lighting kits, perhaps. That'd yeah. be a good subject to break yep. into because that's something that really, I mean. Not everyone's going to get custom printed minifigures. Not everyone's going to get custom sets most of the time. But then a lot of builders, even people who consider themselves purists, mm -hmm. will light up their creations or sets. Yeah. So that's something that I think almost and anyone can get it. Lego into. doesn't really provide solutions for lighting. They were rumoring <coughs> to start doing it for a while, but then they completely backed up. I think it's just not feasible for their kind of mm -hmm. infrastructure, the type of pieces that they're making. So. Well, I know in years past, even the electronics they do make is actually farmed out and made by another company. Yeah, they don't so, want to do, have anything to do with it. So. Um, the uh, They've always been good quality mm -hmm. in general. So yeah, lighting, there's lots of different types of lighting and different ways uh, to use it. Mm -hmm. And there's like beginner lighting and then there's advanced lighting. Yeah. And we've just moved up, I would say, to advanced lighting with some mm -hmm. of the mocks we've had to make in the past year for uh, commission building yes. for large companies or for movies. Mm -hmm. uh, the TV show, uh, we're allowed to talk about it now. It was yeah. um, Call Me Cat. It was mm -hmm. like a spinoff of the Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. And we had to light up the bar. It was a Christmas lights and Christmas theme. The Corks and Orcs bar? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And that was... I think there was probably, I would guess there were 15 USB cords coming out of that. Yeah, and there's several lights on each USB plug. So. And I said, never again <laughs> do I want to run into that situation. So this is what we used. We used these ones that we sell, mm -hmm. um, and they're great. It's a This is a 1x4 plate mm -hmm. with LED lights uh, glued inside it. In the bottom very meticulously uh, micro-drilled wire coming out of it, mm -hmm. and then a USB cord attached to it. Yeah. But let's say you need 10 of these, mm -hmm. and you don't have 10 strung together. We do have some strung together. Yeah. But you don't have, let's say you need 10 of these and you don't have them all strung together, then you can also get uh, these, I don't know what they call them, but they're, I think they call them DC mm -hmm. connections. There are these just these tiny, tiny, microscopic connections yeah, wow. that go into a larger board, mm -hmm. and it eliminates all your wires and your big chunky USB ports. Mm -hmm. So um, 
we could have an unlimited number of these going into different boards and then uh, then going into a USB port and mm -hmm. then coming out into the socket. Yeah, that's socket. very advanced. We haven't quite gotten to that point yet with any of the stuff that we've done, I think. But We maybe haven't started selling them online yet, mm -hmm. but I did order enough stock to be able to have these available for our own commission building. Yeah. Um, I don't think our customers are really at the level where they need to use stuff like this. Not yet, so. No, yeah. they're, they're more, I suggest the USB. I really mm -hmm. like that. But sometimes you can't have uh, a USB port or maybe it's a car that a you vehicle. don't want a wire coming out of mm -hmm. or a minifigure, so then you've got your battery operated lights. Yeah. And the battery operated lights serve that purpose, but you can't have a city full of battery operated lights. <laughs> no. You'd have to go to every single little switch little to turn switch it on. switch to turn it on. Mm -hmm. Whereas what I like about the USB and our entire city is run off USB, one button turns it all on. Yeah. As long as that uh, surge protector where all the USBs come mm -hmm. to is plugged in, you're good. So And then this is our most popular selling lighting option. Mm -hmm. They're the lighting kits that are made for specific Lego kits. So this is the the Lego modular town hall lighting kit. Yeah. And have you ever put one of these into a set? I have. So okay. I, I've done two different ones. They're a little bit smaller sets than mm -hmm. for compared to the town hall, for example. But uh, the one that I did was for the Tron Light Cycle Lego Ideas set. Okay. And it has lights in the wheels, has lights in the base, and it just looks phenomenal. It's orange and blue. And Tron is a very, um, the, the Tron Legacy movie was very light and atmosphere focused. So mm -hmm. it just kind of helps create that atmosphere for sure. And Tron then, is total lights. Yeah. Um, but so are buildings, like modulars. Mm -hmm. So it once you put add lights into a mock, it just is next level stuff. Exactly. Um, I've gone to Lego conventions where you walk around and look during the daytime and you don't even notice some mocks. Mm -hmm. And then nighttime rolls around and they have what's called the world of lights and they turn off the lights. The conventional lights for like an hour. And yeah. they turn on the Lego lights and it's a different world. Yeah. It really is. That is the coolest part of any convention if you're able to attend as an exhibitor. So. What makes these challenging is that that are made for specific sets mm -hmm. is that if you've already got it built, you might have to unbuild it. A little bit at least. A yeah. little bit mm -hmm. and then rebuild it with the lights inside. Whereas I'm the kind of guy that's going to take a USB light and just stick it in there. Yeah, exactly. Um, you don't have to necessarily get a lighting kit for it. You mm -hmm. could just get a Lego light and put it in yourself. But this makes it really nice to pre-assemble. Yeah. Like if you have a a modular city and you don't want to have to think about each light you have to buy separately, this is actually probably going to save you time and money to do it that yeah. way. Yeah, so. and our, our customers do really like these. Yeah. So. And we have most of the popular sets available, Star Wars, our website, Creator, yeah. um, all the cool sets that would look good with light kit. Even some that maybe don't make sense, like a Porg lighting kit, that was interesting. So the Porg has a huge light coming from his mouth, it's very unique. So. <laughs> funny, but is it worth it? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one, so. Uh, yeah, we don't carry them for, so they make them for friend sets mm -hmm. and nin Ninjago sets. And yeah, those we don't bother sets. with as much. I, I just don't bother ordering them. I, I just can't see them selling that well. Those are for play more usually. Like a modular, you, you, you will play with it, but it's mostly mm -hmm. for the cool look, so yeah. And then if you are getting into lighting, these are kind of some lighting essentials. Mm -hmm. This is a USB hub. That way you can plug more than one light into one USB hub and then into the wall. Yeah. We sell these on our website. We have our logo custom printed on. We use these all the time in our city too yeah. to help reduce the amount of plugs and mm -hmm. condense it. So. Um, we also use them around the register. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they, they work for really other things. They really come in handy. Yeah. And then this is just a USB extension cord right here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're building a city and you need, uh, you, I, I mean, I guarantee you're going to need one of these yeah. in order to get to the light switch or from one end to the city to the other. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're all relatively cheap, ten dollars each. Yeah, we have. Oh, we could talk about the uh, uh, yeah, power not, functions. It's plug. not really lighting, but it's. Uh, Something that was needed by uh, me, I needed this. Mm -hmm. It was uh, power functions only runs on batteries. Yeah. 
So we came up with this like five years ago where it's like, hey, can we take a power functions um, connector and attach it to a USB cord? Mm -hmm. And our lighting guy who makes the lighting kits for us said, yeah, I can do that, no problem. So he did it and he sent it to us and that was five years ago and we've been selling them ever since. We've probably sold about a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as I know, we're the only ones that have these on the market. Yeah. You know, it's not perfect. There's no step controller. Mm -hmm. You'd have to use either a remote to control the speed or, or anything. But you plug that in, you get full speed off the bat. So mm -hmm. you're, you do need to use a switch or something. to Or manually gear it down if yeah. you have those. Uh, yeah. But these sell really well because of that. Mm -hmm. And that's something that Lego hasn't made because they don't want to have kids plugging things into walls. That? Mm -hmm. it, that's probably what... Is that true? I, I believe it's yeah. mostly the safety reason why they don't have plug-in Lego things anymore. Yeah. But um, they try to keep it to AA batteries, which are pretty safe. So Safe, yeah. yeah. But not functional for professionals. Oh, yeah. If you have a train <laughs> layout at, at, at a house or at, at a convention and you run it for more than a few hours, that battery is dead. Oh, yeah. And uh, the batteries. And so this means that you could have your lights or your train layout or whatever you're doing running for as long as you want it to. So that's that, great. now that Legos discontinued power functions, you're, they're not going to waste time. Making no, it. they're not going to circle back to that at all. So we've also got, we want to talk about our cases now. Yeah, so that winds us down. I mean, we really only get have a couple more things. Yeah, here. we've covered a lot of Lego custom items and concepts here, but um, the one thing that can kind of encapsulate them all is a, a great display case. So. Yeah, and display cases are expensive. Mm -hmm. So I would say the... You know, the highest end cases you can get out there are going to be like Wicked Bricks yes. cases, which Gotta are shout made them out, specifically yeah. for certain models, usually. Mm -hmm. um, they work very similar to this case here. This is just a cheap case that we carry. Um, this is acrylic, mm -hmm. and it comes flat, kind of like in a flat box. Actually, yep. I have it's one right here. Yeah, yeah. So it comes in this flat box right here. It's only 20 bucks, which is affordable, but uh, Wicked Bricks is going to be a lot higher quality. Yes. But it's going to be probably $50, too. Yeah. I think Wicked Bricks is based out of the UK, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so here. And so when you get this one here, it we've had this out on display for a while, so it's come disassembled a few times. But this actually works really well for displaying minifigures and smaller models. Mm -hmm. um, there we go. And it just snaps together really well. But this is also the way that Wicked uh, bricks work. Yeah. You know, it's very similar like that. It comes flat and then you put it together. Exactly. Uh, the Wicked Bricks ones are also engraved mm -hmm. but with the set number on it and it does use some magnets and some screws. Yes. And they have cool background <coughs> that, you know, you can have in different kits of theirs. So. This is one of our best sellers on our website. This mm -hmm. is $20. And then <coughs> we recently got these over here, recently, right? Recently, just two weeks ago, we got this case here. In this case is my new favorite thing that we sell uh, because it makes it's just the perfect size for speed champions. Mm -hmm. And what's different about this case, here's the packaging that it comes in, <clears throat> is it this is all one piece, this top part. Yeah. And it's plastic, mm -hmm. it's not acrylic. So uh, I, the manufacturer told me, they made it clear hey, this isn't acrylic, it's plastic. And I'm like, yeah. okay, so what? <laughs> yeah. What's the difference? I still don't really Yeah, know. It looks very similar. So. I guess the chemical compound, the chemical makeup, mm -hmm. but uh, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Um, and then these stack really nice yeah. on top of each other. So, you know, I have a Speed Champions mock that I'm working on, mm -hmm. and I've spent a lot of time on it, and... This actually <laughs> it's, looks it's really good. <laughs> almost changing your mind about how you display uh -huh. your speed champions, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. Because these are only twelve dollars each. Exactly, and they—I think they—it says on there, car model, garage kit, building blocks. So there's, it was made for a variety of purposes, but yeah. speed champions fit great in there. So do a dozen minifigures. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. It's really a win-win, and for twelve bucks, you can get a couple of these and stack yeah. them up and make them look cool. I'm probably going to get some for some of my Star Wars minifigures to go in. So. We sell these in with the black base and the light gray base, mm -hmm. 
And then this one here, I think we just have the black base blur. I think or, no, we black. just got white too. Yes. We just got white. Yes. So we have white and we have black. And we got white, we got light gray and we got white because it like, let's say if you have a bunch of bad guys like Sith, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's kind of hard to see them on that black. They're all base. wearing black leather and they're yeah. on a black base. It doesn't see very well, but on a white or gray, you'll see them right away. So that's great. So, you know, as far as display cases go, they make a lot nicer display cases, a lot mm -hmm. better quality display cases, but they just, along with that quality, it gets so expensive. They're like pretty pricey. Already expensive to begin with. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of like around the store, we get people trading in display cases and there's yes. like one right over there that I'm looking at, but that was like a football helmet one. Mm -hmm. It's got a mirror in the back, and those are stuff that you can get at like Michaels and yeah. Hobby Lobby and stuff like that. But they're really expensive. They are. They're, they're using glass and wood and other materials yeah. that aren't very cheap. So, and yeah. they're not specifically made for Lego, so the, the dimensions might be a little odd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but every now and then we get those, like you're saying, those, those wicked mm -hmm. bricks or other really high-end cases in, and we try to share them that we, we have this. It's probably the easiest way to get it built and ready to go mm -hmm. is here at the store versus ordering online and building it yourself. So, but yeah. So that's quite a bit of LEGO Customs content. Is there anything else we need to start? Right here. Oh, oh, there we go. We got one more <laughs> this, item beneath everything here. This, this mat here, these sell really well, I think. Any A4 would want to use them. Mm -hmm. They're made by Mock Industries, MOC. And uh, they are big Lego fans, obviously. Uh, they made this for scale, building to scale and building your mocks. Mm -hmm. They've got all the right angles here. Um, a lot of math and numbers, numbers, numbers. Yep, angles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it's a building mat that you build on it, and you can kind of size out your mock mm -hmm. using this. Yeah, I do like this the, the stud mm -hmm. grid right here. You can really have fun with that and make a little sphere or something. And, and this is basically, if, if I'm right, this is 30 studs by 52 studs. Mm -hmm. that yeah, that looks right. So. OK. Or maybe it's 30 bricks high. So. 32 studs, that's bigger than a 32 stud base plate. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, it's. Maybe 36. There's 36. There you go. Yeah, 36 yeah. by 52 studs. Yeah. I can't say I actually use it, but a lot of people do. Yeah. I have one of these at home, and I don't. I, I keep it as a decoration because it looks so cool, mm -hmm. but if you needed something like this or wanted something like this to help you just kind of space things out, it's great. So. Yeah, and it's soft. So, kind of um, like a rubber. Yeah, it's kind of like a placemat. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's solid. It's heavy, so it's not going to come off the table. Mm -hmm. um, but also, when you're building with Lego, if you do have a hard surface, even this table could potentially scratch a brick, I guess, whereas yeah. this is not going to do that. Yeah, it's, it's much better for yeah. bricks to be on. And they're a little less likely to, to slide or roll off, too. So mm -hmm. it's great. But yeah, well, that's, um, I think, a pretty thorough breakdown of a lot of the custom stuff we have at the store and having our own collections. Mm -hmm. But um, there's probably more we, we have missed. And if you guys want to let so us know much. in the comments mm -hmm. of your favorite custom third-party Lego accessories makers, let us know. Actually, I'm always interested to hear about new ones or stuff oh, that yeah. and they're working on. So. They're coming out every day. Somebody new is in the market. Mm -hmm. They have a printer or they're making custom kits. We, oh, another one that we resell are the custom brickheads, the Star Wars brickheads. Yes. Yeah, that's um, Imperial bricks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't bring them in, but those are very popular. Yeah. We so. have, uh, I think, probably about a hundred mm -hmm. of those sets available right now. Too. And if you're looking to get into a market mm -hmm. or the uh, third-party market, then start with a niche. Yep. Something specific that not everybody else is doing. Something you like, maybe. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. But thank you, Chris, for mm -hmm. uh, breaking down all this stuff with me. It takes time out of your day. Um, we'll be back with plenty more videos covering all sorts of cool LEGO stuff like this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We will see you guys then. Take care. Bye-bye.